The old house on Dauphine Street shook. Any traffic through the long hall rattled the windows and wood. The quakes alerted Sam when anyone neared. Footsteps were like fingerprints. Every set was special. The way people walked betrayed them. The floor rumbled at her grandma's approach. Her whole body clenched like a fist. The phone Sam held dimmed. The device almost slipped from her sweaty fingers when she scooted along the floor. Rough grooves bordering the black speckled tile scratched her backside. She scrambled for the narrow gap between her grandparents' bedside table and the edge of the neighboring TV stand. Every room in her grandparents' house had a hiding place. Sam memorized them. Other girls and boys would roast her for running from her grandma. But if other girls and boys had grown up with a family of monsters around the dinner table, they'd run too. The TV stand scraped Sam's thigh as she wedged herself into the square of hiding space. She hissed at the burning slash of cold pain. Pressed into a corner, she hiked up her black slip dress. Welling beads of red stippled a ragged layer of skin. A stinging dab of her finger smeared the blood. She wiped her hand on her shredded thigh highs and hunkered down. Samantha Agatha Aguirre, Grandma called in her creaky, cracky voice. Come out here, girl. Come on. The demons of hell love idle children. Sam was fine with that. At least someone loved her. The phone Sam tapped read May 1st, 5 p.m. when the home screen faded out of sleep. Evening mass was about to begin. Every day, Grandma walked to St. Peter and Paul's for prayer and penance. The fire and brimstone talk was supposed to scare Sam into going with her. Church was the family solution to every problem, and Sam was everyone's problem. Why anyone thought a church could help when everyone knew all the things churches and priests and parishioners did baffled Sam, but she'd never understood her family. Cruelty ran in their blood. The shuffling in the hall stopped at the bedroom door. Sam held her breath. The charge of grandma's presence tingled over her arms and legs. Discerning the temperature of her family's moods and anticipating their sudden plummet was vital to her survival. She sensed anger like some people sensed storms. If Sam's vigilance slipped, she'd smiss when the mischievous twinkle in someone's eye shifted to a malicious sheen. The venomous remark spit at her would hit, its poison eroding the little scraps of self to which she ferociously clung. Cheeks flaming, inside shriveling, she'd wait, smile plastered on her face until they left her alone. In her room, she'd smother her sobs in a pillow, None of them could ever know how badly they'd hurt her. Again. That was her family. Decades-old grudges weaponized every interaction with their children and grandchildren. Problems were solved with prayer, with bullets and barbs, fists, and a silent, seething contempt sharper than any stiletto. Sam had had enough, and she had a plan. That was why she'd begged to stay with her grandparents for the summer. The thud of Sam's heart in her ears and the salespeople chattering on the ancient TV were the only sounds for a long while. When Grandma's clomping footsteps retreated, the weight of her menacing presence lifted. The front door opened and closed. Sam exhaled. Her limbs loosened and she slouched against the wall. Still jammed in the hidden corner, she messed with her phone. Fingers scabbed with black polish tapped the cracked screen. The book Sam read reappeared. The newest installment of her favorite series, Bloodless, went live three days ago. The novels were about a girl with a shit family who ran away from home and fell in with a brood of vampires squatting in an abandoned hotel. Bloodless inspired Sam's big plan. If the girl in her favorite books could ditch her family for a better one, she could too. A dash through the scrubby alley that ran alongside her grandparents' house and a trek across Elysian fields and Esplanade avenues would deliver Sam to the manure stink chaos of the French Quarter. Anyone could be lost and forgotten on those crumbling streets in adjacent neighborhoods. Under her mom and dad's watch in Old Metairie, there was no hope of escape. 
Sam had a crumpled stash of cash. She had her phone until someone figured out she was gone. Homeless, crusty kids camped on Esplanade. Crusty kids wore olive green, gray, and brown. They pitched tents and rolled out old mattresses and dirty sleeping bags over the neutral ground. Filthy blonde mutts followed them up and down Decatur Street where they begged and hustled and busked. No one liked them. They were everyone's problem. She suspected she'd fit right in. Her hand strayed to the steel heart collar bound to her throat. The necklace was just like the one the main character wore in Bloodless. So much waited for her once she left this hell behind. Setting her phone aside, Sam slumped against the boxy TV. Her head rested against its black plastic casing. Electricity crackled over her hair. The salespeople's voices vibrated against her ear. They hawked jewelry for the next hour. Shopping channel shows were grandma's favorite. Spotlights shone on all the rings and bracelets and necklaces, highlighting their installment plan sparkle. Even though the jewels were fake, they looked like something a queen might wear. No one dared her to queen. No one said terrible things to her. Everyone wanted what she had. Sam did too. If she was a queen, maybe people would treat her like she was somebody. With all her heart left to her, she wished it was so. I can help you with that, a velvety voice coming from the TV said. Sam's grandma had told her a half-truth. Demons didn't love idle children, but they had a use for them. Despondent, neglected, and abused children with little cause for help drew the emissaries of hell like flies to carrion. As Sam sat huddled in a corner, a demon scented her, knew she was all alone, knew there was no one who'd bother to save her even if all it took was a word. She was a perfect victim. A thousand taloned hands reached up from the dark to drag her down and rip her to wet shreds. The voice sounded nothing like the people gushing over whatever new product all the viewers just had to have. This voice was sly and eager and rich with secrets. Whoever owned that voice knew what Sam wanted and they meant to give it to her. Phone in hand, she wedged out from the slim gap in the furniture and knelt before the altar of the TV stand. The tile's rough texture rasped against her stockinged feet and knees. A strange man stood on the television, like his lurid technicolor image painted directly onto the screen's dusty glass. His cobalt skin shimmered. When he waved, rainbow light danced on his hand like it danced on the cubic zirconian necklace rotating behind him. A navy suit cut like a razor hugged his lean frame. Amethyst eyes flashed like chips of real semi-precious gems. They weren't soft and wet like human eyes, but hard and bright with an otherworldly sheen. When he said, hello, Sam crushed her hands to the sides of her head. This was it. She was crazy. Crazy like her narc mom who called Sam a little bitch and told everyone who'd listen all about how difficult her daughter made her life. Crazy like her church freak grandma with her visions of the devil lurking in every shadow. All the fear and rage and starvation finally broke her brain. The man on the TV talking directly to her was hard proof. Fingers clawed down her face and hooked into her mouth. I'm psycho, she said around her hands. Not psychotic, the blue man in the fancy suit said cheerily. Just severely traumatized. Nothing to sniff at, certainly, but there's no need for unnecessary dramatics. This wasn't real. It wasn't happening. Sam shut her eyes tight. Fingers dug painfully into her cheeks. When she let go and opened her eyes, the man was still there, smiling a fang-filled smile. Who are you? She whispered. With a little bow and a magician's flourish of his hands, the man said, I am Gleam, one of the 500 demon emissaries of hell. And you are? Sam, Aguirre, and I'm no one, yet. Not until she got out of here. She squinted at the demon and scrunched up her face. What if this was real? What if he was what he said he was? Demons were like genies. They granted wishes that destroyed stupid humans unaccustomed to their games. Sam wasn't stupid. She was specific, guarded, and calculating. Her family taught her that was necessary. Why are you here? I'm here to invite you to hell. 
I'm not about the whole eternal torture thing. That's mostly metaphor, gossip, and bad press. Sure, sure. Truly, hell is a wondrous realm. Not just anyone may enter. Only special humans are selected. The demon's upscale smile broadened, and I can tell you are very special indeed. Special. A shiver wriggled Sam's shoulders and rustled her satiny dress. She was different. Everyone could tell. She didn't belong with other people, didn't belong anywhere. The deep well of aching loneliness within branded her an outcast. At the bottom of that dark and yawning pain was a glittering jewel, a promise that she did not belong because she was special, destined for a terrible greatness that would break her or leave her brilliant as a blazing star. The demon's presence was proof she'd always been right, but she had to be very careful. Why would I want to go to hell? You were planning on leaving anyway, were you not? Hell's certainly a preferable choice to a camp of street trash. That's a yikes. People do what they have to to get by. Doesn't mean they're trash. Some people certainly must do what they must. But is that the sort of life you truly wish? Not if there's better. You know there is, or I wouldn't be here trying to convince you of what you've always known to be true. We know what's meant for some people, but why don't you tell me what's meant for you? A delicious sharpness closed around Sam's heart. On her knees, she crawled closer to the TV. With her hands pressed to the screen, she brought her gloss-stained lips close to Gleam's face and whispered, I want everyone to know I could do terrible things to them just by the look of me. I want everyone to be scared. So scared they'd never dream of hurting me again. The demon smile nearly split his face in two. In hell, my dear Samantha, that can be easily arranged. Sam sat back on her heels. The sweatshirt crop top she wore over her dress slipped down one shoulder. How do we get there? 